Dia bukannya terus uh, mm-hmm. Happen overnight mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. actually so, In a way Dia memang overnight pun You don't really have to Macam terus berhenti kerja What is one mistake That Amirul Mohtar buat Yang Amirul rasa Orang lain pat- Tak patut Dan patut Sorry Patut elakkan daripada buat hmm. Oh ni Susah kan Soalan You're listening to the Cyber Skill Podcast, where we share and talk about how anyone, and we mean anyone, can grow business from just your skills. This is the place to be, where one skill is all you need. Now, here's your host, Pae Brian. Boleh ke kita nak buat empat angka dalam masa satu minggu sahaja, dan kita cuma perlu luangkan masa dua jam sahaja. Jawapannya adalah boleh. Dan tetamu jemputan kita hari ini akan kongsikan serba sedikit macam mana dia buat dan of course dia mahu detailkan dia punya skill. Hai, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Selamat datang ke episod yang ketujuh dalam The Sell Your Skill Podcast. Kalau this is the first time here, Sell Your Skill Podcast is all about kita nak monetizekan skill yang kita ada untuk kita generate income yang mungkin boleh satu hari nanti menjadi kita punya main source of income. Dan seperti biasa, setiap minggu kita akan ada tetamu jemputan dan tetamu jemputan kita hari ini merupakan seorang kenalan saya, seorang yang sangat hebat pada pandangan saya dan dia akan kongsikan serba sedikit apa yang telah beliau lakukan. So, saya introducekan serba sedikit tentang beliau. Nama beliau ialah Amirul Mokhtar dan beliau tinggal di Puchung Selangor. So, pekerjaan yang beliau tuliskan dekat saya adalah freelance marketer, trainer dan juga coach dan recently left 9 to 5 job as a head of marketing at Easy Store. Maybe some of you ada yang dengar, pernah dengar head, uh, Easy Store dan saya sendiri pernah gunakan Easy Store dan it is one of the best platform in my eyes lah. Next ialah skill yang dimonetizkan. Apakah skill yang Amirul Mohtar monetizkan ini? Building WhatsApp, you need website using no code tools, automating funnels, content marketing, meta as Google as. So there's a lot of them. So that's why in my mind, he's one of the best lah. Next ialah dimonetizkan through done for you services, paid workshops and affiliate commissions for software. Now, Best achievement with skill, made over 3K in one week with just a two-hour online workshop while still working full-time. So, without further ado, help me in welcoming our guest this week, Mr. Amirul Mokhtar. Amirul, apa khabar? Alhamdulillah, apa khabar? Okay, baik. Alhamdulillah. So, lama kita tak bersua, last I think from the webinar tu lah, if you still remember ah, the webinar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's the first ending, the last time we actually uh, hang out secara virtual lah. Dan hari ini uh, kita jemput untuk because I know you are one of the people yang memang actually test can skill. Dan I think there's a lot yang you boleh share. But uh, sebagai mukadimah mungkin Amirul boleh kongsikan sebesar sedikit update terkait ni apa yang Amirul tengah buat apa projek dan sebagainya mungkin ada uh, orang-orang yang tengok kita punya podcast ni ataupun dengar kat Spotify dan sebagainya nak tahu update tentang Amirul Mokta mungkin ada follow Amirul dekat Twitter dan sebagainya. Okay. Alright, uh, first of all, thank you lah for inviting. So, just update just about me uh, sekarang ni. Uh, so, before this, uh, like you said, memang kerja full-time as head of marketing at uh-huh. Easy Store. And um, at the same time, masa tu pun, I uh, was already doing, uh, macam my wife is doing her own business. Uh-huh. So, ada tolong jugalah sikit kat situ about e-commerce. Uh, and then memang on the side, ada uh, juga buat some freelancing and some coaching and training um, related to digital marketing, related to e-commerce. Mm. So now, uh, I've officially uh, resigned from my full-time position. <laughs> and yang benda-benda yang part-time tu semua ni sekarang jadi full-time lah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, dia... Uh, boleh put more effort, put more focus dekat benda-benda yang uh, what I have been doing uh, while I was doing, uh, while I was working uh, full time tu. So, training mm. tu dia jadi lebih banyak lah akan datang. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. right oh. now I am uh, preparing some uh, modules for the future. Mm, uh, so, I akan, I akan launch some courses and some mm. more workshops lah. Faham, faham. Okay, thank you for the update. So, kita tak nak berdorak dalik lagi. Kita nak sentuhkan the elephant in the room which is the one thing that you mentioned to me dan yang saya dah sebutkan tadi which is how you made 3K in one week which, with just a two hour online workshop. Boleh tak Aminul kongsikan sebuah sedikit how you did it and basically what the workshop was about. Okay, uh, so dia, dia cerita dia sebenarnya macam Okay, I've been doing uh, marketing for quite some years lah kan. Mm-hmm. And the 
the the apa the most common thing orang akan buat is macam freelancing. Yes. Freelancing. But I've tried freelancing semua tu and then macam tak berapa suka sangat. Mm. I don't really like uh, yelah nak cari more and more clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you mean. Uh, and <laughs> so, and then I came across uh, this thing called micro workshops. Oh, okay. Uh, the, sebenarnya, it's just a workshop lah. It's just a uh, micro ataupun mini, mini workshop. So, dia mm-hmm. satu workshop di mana uh, participants tu, at the end of the workshop tu, dia, dia dapat something. Dia dah uh, boleh achieve like one very tangible thing. Oh, oh uh, okay. Instead of macam how to generate a certain amount of money ke, six figures, seven figures kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So in this particular macam uh, workshop ni, dia terus dapat something. So for example, yang uh, what I did was uh, a website punya workshop. So mm-hmm. at the end of the workshop tu, dia dah boleh launch tak dia punya workshop. And of course using no code tools macam uh, easy store macam tu lah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, masa tu, yes I have the experience lah macam years of experience dia bukannya terus uh, happen mm-hmm. overnight but mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. in a way dia memang overnight pun uh, so i was reading uh, apa buku tu uh, sell like crazy ke i think at that time oh by sabi sabi ya so we mm-hmm. and it terus dapat idea macam okay let's just do this let's just do this uh, workshop kan and mm-hmm. then make it a bit like a bit webinar lah let's just mm-hmm. uh, let's just make it bit and they see whether or not uh, people are willing to pay for it. No, faham, faham. And then masa tu terus, okay, okay, I already have the idea and then uh, ada buku-buku uh, .com secret, expert secret at that mm-hmm. time. So terus tiru dia punya funnel, dia punya landing page. Memang ikut mm-hmm. segi dia punya uh, landing page tu. Huh? And then at that time, module apa semua tak ada lagi. Oh. Just the topic tu. So just the topic tu ada. Uh, so you just created the landing page and then let's just try, try it out let's validate the market lah mm-hmm. uh, so make it uh, at a low price uh, so tu rasa dalam RM30 macam tu oh okay uh, around that lah uh, so mm-hmm. like RM30 just for uh, the registration uh, so create the landing page landing page siap set up the payment payment gateway semua tu payment link and then push it out to I see. Uh, Twitter wow. lah. So of course it it helps to have an audience mm-hmm. too on uh, Twitter. So I push it out on Twitter, <coughs> and then uh, surprisingly, ramai orang uh, ended up registering for the online class tu. Mm-hmm. So tu buat guna Zoom, uh, landing page pun uh, guna. I was using Card Card dot co. Oh okay okay. Dalam nineteen uh, USD per year. Oh, yeah. uh, so very low cost untuk buat benda ni Modul pun tak prepare apa-apa lagi Let's try it out Okay ada topik Because I understand the pain points of The target audience kan mm-hmm. Topik mm-hmm. yang mm-hmm. diorang nak uh, And then just launched it Then in one week tu dah more than 3k So mm. kalau 30 mm. ringgit uh, Then you can do the math lah Yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. Yang. That's a lot lah <laughs> uh, So macam mm-hmm. oh At that time macam memang light bulb lah Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I can really do this. I see. That's that's really interesting because I think uh, two parts yang kita nak uh, kembang dan skip from that, which is number one, you mentioned that you were doing it masa Amiro masih lagi tengah bekerja, betul ke? Ya, yeah, betul. Okay, so how did you find the time? Sebab most of the time, people akan datang kat saya, dia akan bagi tahu, uh, Pak eh, saya tak ada masa lah nak buat things mm-hmm. like this. So what's your take on that? Which is, how did you do it? Macam mana Amiro bahagikan masa untuk, you know, with working and uh, you were also head of marketing, which is a job that's pretty big lah kan, dekat satu company to ensure things go smooth and whatnot. Macam mana Amiro buat? Macam mana Amiro bahagikan masa untuk get started doing it? Dia even before uh, masa nak bahagikan masa, nak find the time to do it, Mm-hmm. tu memang cari benda yang doesn't involve a lot of time. So oh, memang dari okay. awal tu macam mana nak uh, shorten the process. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then of course dah memang ada some experience lah buat benda ni. Uh, mm-hmm. Jadi page tu dah, dah tahu dah buat macam mana. It's mm-hmm. just dia ambil masa the creative process tu macam mana kita nak design kita punya landing page tu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kat situ yang uh, So that process tu yang uh, lama tapi 
sebab memang tiru bulat-bulat apa ada dalam apa dot com secret dia memang bagi tahu dia punya uh, apa dia ada template dia ada sesuatu mm-hmm. memang ikut benda tu je faham faham ikut sebiji macam tu jadi the process tu sekejap je lah in one day dah boleh siap mm-hmm. uh, the landing page mm-hmm. uh, so benda-benda lain pun macam sekejap je uh, oh, so oh. that was the biggest part of like time time was mm-hmm. kan the time mm-hmm. the time issue tu jangan buat benda yang take a lot of time lah i see jangan buat benda uh, i think it took just like two two to three days je nak buat benda tu mm-hmm. and uh, about two hours per day i see i see uh, so oh. tak tak adalah lama sangat mm-hmm. uh, and then the actual uh, execution of the workshop tu pun dua jam je mm-hmm. tu pun through live Uh, through uh, Zoom, Zoom lah. live mm-hmm. buat kelas kan. Uh, so in total dia tak ambil banyak masa pun. Oh. Terus dapat. Uh, dia yang ambil banyak masa tu uh, the, the uh, big part of it is building the audience lah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Dan memang I have been building up the audience for a few years kan. Mm-hmm. And then bila buat something so dia nampak macam wow boleh dapat tiga more than 3k <laughs> in one week kan. Oh, Tapi Uh, that that was the part of it lah but in terms of the execution part memang sekejap je <laughs> even uh, tak ada modul lagi <laughs> just launch dulu and then ada orang bayar and then baru kita fikir modul tu kemudian i see i see uh, modul oh, tu pun oh. sekejap je lah because it was just a uh, two two hour punya session <laughs> a lot of the parts pun macam hands on so boleh screen share <laughs> But you had the topic in mind kan? Maksudnya probably you have the MVP awal-awal kan? Maksudnya all the topics before Sebab you tak ada modul tetapi you had the original topics ke? Atau memang you tak ada apa-apa lagi? Yeah, the the topic tu dah ada uh-huh. Sebab dah faham the target audience tu So okay. dah tahu pain points So mm-hmm. tu dah memang tahu dah So mm-hmm. it's just uh, countering the pain points je I see, okay that's very interesting sebab kadang-kadang uh, uh, most of the things that I've heard lah orang bila nak launch something ni dia kata oh tak ada masa nak buat semuanya and I think uh, your take on it which is very genius maksudnya kita tak perlu pun nak buat benda tu dulu because at the end of the day mungkin kita tak pasti bukan akan ada demand otak for what we're doing kan yep. so we creating the MVP masa topik dulu kemudian dah launch ataupun dah ada orang registered then we can proceed with doing it lah And then uh, to follow up on that, okay, you mentioned uh, just now yang you build an audience first and then you launch your product, betul? Betul. Okay, so for people yang tengok ataupun dengar kita punya podcast ni, katakanlah dia tak ada audience dan dia tak ada product. Which one dia kena buat dulu? Now, right now, your advice for them. Dia tengok apa you punya objektif. So mm-hmm. let's say you punya objektif is income. To generate mm. income, mm-hmm. so to generate income, so you fikir lah, okay, what's the, uh, what do you need to do to, mm-hmm. to build an income? Dia jangan, okay, I want to do this and then how I do it. Oh, okay. There, you work backwards first. Sebab, mm-hmm. okay, kalau sebab kalau tak ada duit, then of course you have to find money lah. Betul, betul. Uh, if the uh, income is your goal, mm-hmm. then either cari kerja, freelance dulu. Because that's what I did. I I did freelancing juga. Mm-hmm. So with freelancing, I got income. And I also uh, dapat experience which I can mm-hmm. share to build up the audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in my mm-hmm. case, first, okay, I was doing freelance and at the same time, I was working uh, with the company. Tu lah. And that company tu pun, dia punya target audience, uh, dia macam ada overlap with the I audience see. that I want. Faham, faham. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, income wise, dah ada. Uh, experience wise, ada. So just building up the audience first. The, actually, see. it's not first lah. It's the that step mm-hmm, that process mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, the launching of the course ke uh, workshops tu is after that i see faham faham okay so basically what you're saying is kalau lah kita working tak kisahlah in what industry bukan and then apa yang kita nak jual afterwards meaning a workshop an ebook a video course and what not if it's related to what we're doing right now at work Maybe we can use that experience to build our audience at the same time lah kan? Yeah, and uh. tu memang my, the the base of what I do mm. right now. Memang mm-hmm. dari dulu lagi, okay, I got a job uh, in uh, digital marketing mm-hmm. and I use the experience that I got from that company mm-hmm. and uh, I shared lah, I shared and at the same time because mm-hmm. I was in 
uh, B2B, business to business kan. Mm-hmm. So, dia macam uh, rotate kat situ. So, uh-huh. Uh-huh. at the same time, I can use that uh, as an advantage to my company that I'm working with at that time. I see. Uh, and then memang see. sampai sekarang, it's the same thing. It's just, uh, <laughs> doing, just repeating uh, it. Uh, eh, so, in my case, dia going back to yang time tadi kan, tak ada masa, tak ada masa mm-hmm. nak buat the side income ke apa. Everything is within the same loop, within the same circle. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. dia tak, tak adalah macam I have to do additional things uh, for the side income. Dia macam, dia memang within the same uh, cycle. Even uh, my wife punya business pun is in e-commerce. Mm-hmm. So, masa uh, dekat Easy Store tu, so my wife is the customer. I see. I see. The client, and then boleh guna uh, as a experience to share, boleh guna as a testimony. So, dia memang pusing-pusing dekat situ juga. Faham, faham. Mm-hmm. That's interesting, uh, interesting. So, building my, my personal brand pun in the uh, SMEs, uh, micro mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, uh, dia dekat situ je. Dia tak, dia tak lari jauh lah. Faham, faham. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting because Uh, kadang-kadang orang rasa macam you know because mungkin uh, skill yang kita nak promote tu sama skill yang kita tengah pakai kat kerja so just why not during that time tu just you know build an audience eh? and then afterwards you have a product you just boleh jual sajalah that's uh, I think it's not easy but it's simpler than doing the other way around kot yeah. okay uh, so okay my next question is this is something that saya really nak tahu I I want to hear this sebab apa uh, when you sent me the additional info via DM dekat Twitter you mentioned that you tak berapa suka sangat freelancing okay you tak berapa suka sangat freelancing now can you elaborate on that and why kenapa sebenarnya Amirul Mokhtar tak suka freelancing okay. so <laughs> dia in in simple way dia macam ni lah okay uh, you work for your uh, for a company you are the one boss mm-hmm. tapi bila you buat freelance and then you have multiple clients so you have multiple bosses oh i see uh, oh, so benda oh. tu uh, for my preference i i'm not saying benda ni tak bagus ke apa yeah, 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 because yeah. Uh, ada orang dia ada suka benda ni mm-hmm. but for me my lifestyle uh, apa yang i nak buat tak uh, it, it doesn't align lah with Uh-huh. Uh, the way the way I do this but I really want something like flexible ke apa and then uh, so kalau ada seorang je boss okay it's okay and then uh, so tu satu another part is when I'm doing marketing ke apa for a company I will put more than 100% uh. for that company jadi bila ada banyak dia tak ada cap, not enough capacity lah faham, faham. to put so because I will put my heart and soul on that uh, business memang hmm. tidur tengah nak tidur pun kena <laughs> fikir lagi uh, so uh-huh. i make it like my own business lah uh-huh. so uh-huh. jadi bila so kalau nak buat freelance ni macam one or two clients tu okay lagi lah but to have it uh, as the main source of income and then finding keep finding new and new clients and growing tu uh-huh. uh-huh. yang dia tak berapa nak uh, suka sangat in uh, that uh-huh. sense lah Uh, so at the end of the day, going back to uh, you happy ataupun tak untuk buat benda tu lah kan? Betul, so, mungkin yeah. ada yang dengar tiba-tiba rasa macam, oh tak nak lah buat freelancing sebab uh, Amir Ramotor pun tak buat. Tapi uh, at the end of the day, it goes back to uh, if you're happy doing I, it. I, I do freelance. Uh, that's the thing. Yeah. I do freelance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it for quite some time. Uh-huh. It's just that I'm not making it uh, my main thing. Main source of income. Uh, 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 kalau ada something yang boleh replace it, then I will replace it. But at the moment, uh-huh. tak ada yang boleh replace lagi. <laughs> and it's uh, it's good for experience jugalah sebab mm-hmm. you boleh work Betul. with uh, different companies in different industries uh, benda tu yang shape my experience my knowledge mm-hmm. uh, in uh, marketing faham faham yes i agree 100% because uh, saya sendiri pun buat you know freelancing and having all these clients and and so i understand 100% what you mean but uh, again it goes back to if you're happy doing it You know, yeah. just buat lah, kan? Because sometimes ada orang yang memang suka deal directly with a lot of people. Uh, yeah, maybe you and I dah penat macam tu. <laughs> so, kita nak berubah arah pula kan ke, you know, teaching and whatnot. Okay, so my next question is, uh, Amirul. Okay. Uh, katakanlah, for example, uh, most of the people that I've met, dia akan bagi tahu yang uh, dia nak berhenti kerja untuk go all in in their skill. So I cannot give advice on that because uh, you know maybe uh, you're not aware of that maybe some of them or uh, audience pun tak 
away yang saya sendiri pun baru habis degree bulan 3 hari tu. So I've not have any work yet but I have been monetizing my skills for a few years lah. Okay. So what's your advice for people yang dia kata, okay, uh, aku nak berhenti kerja sebab aku nak go all in in my skill. So what's your advice for them? Should they do it or should they not do it? Uh, dia macam zaman sekarang ni kan with mm-hmm. all the tools that we have technology mm-hmm. semua tu dia it, it's you don't really have to macam terus berhenti kerja mm-hmm. you can do it uh, on the side and then kalau macam uh, usually the common issue is time kan time mm-hmm. uh, so I get this a lot macam tak ada masa dah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> penat kan and that's mm-hmm. where you get this dilemma of whether should you uh, berhenti kerja ke tak kan Faham? So the thing is banyak dah tools tu sekarang mm-hmm. yang boleh uh, yes it still involve some time lah you still yeah. spend time that that's your effort kan? of course but dah tak perlu nak spend banyak masa dah sekarang mm. it's just you know you you come back uh, from work and then even dengan jam ke apa dengan dinner pun you still have few hours kan at night betul betul you boleh buat something So it doesn't have to be okay nak buat 8 jam. It can be like one hour a day pun boleh. And then there are lots of tools, uh, no code tools, uh, AI kan sekarang. Mm, yeah. everything kan? <laughs> AI, AI, AI. Uh, so memang benda tu dia dah shorten the process of us to having to do additional work. Faham? So actually tak perlu pun uh, do something on the side. And then another perspective is my perspective. <laughs> kita kerja tu to one of the ways kita boleh monetize. Oh, okay. Uh, because you you are getting income for your work kan. Mm-hmm. Just apa jenis uh, kerja tu lah. So uh, let's say uh, in my case uh, I'm a marketer for a living. Mm-hmm. So my job pun I'm working for a company as a marketer. Faham? Uh, then that is my source of income. So at mm-hmm. the same time I'm using my skills as a marketer. I boleh offer service, other service. I boleh teach people. So that's another source of income. But it's the same thing I'm doing. Uh-huh. Um, company ke, uh, for your personal ke. <laughs> so, lagi lah sekarang ni, dia pun dah banyak macam remote work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all this kind of thing. So, <laughs> it's not whether you you are working or not, and then you kerja sendiri ke, atau you kerja dengan company. It's just <laughs> you, you as the person, you are the skills. How do you monetize it? Kalau the work tu is how you monetize your skill, then it's how you monetize lah. Faham, faham. So another way is to see it in that perspective. Mm. So if you look at uh, your income streams, it can be, okay, one is from your job. One is from maybe you buat uh, social media, jadi content creator ke. Mm-hmm. You buat uh, affiliate. You ajar kelas. Uh, macam nak buat content, TikTok ke apa. So it revolves around the same thing and this is just how you monetize it. Faham? So it doesn't have to be either or lah. Tak, tak mm-hmm. perlu nak pilih nak kerja ke, nak berhenti ke. Uh, the best way for me is to make it uh, like I say macam a circle tadi. It's all within the same circle. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. cara you monetize je. Betul, betul. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting because uh, ada setengah orang mungkin yang dia punya 9 to 5 job tu dia suka. Tapi mungkin sebab dia believe yang you know there's some sort of agenda I'll call it agenda lah kan agenda dekat luar sana yang saying that if you want to make a lot of money you need to quit your job and go 100% in anything I think maybe you've heard things like that kan So maybe uh, what you said just now I 100% agree because tak semestinya kita kena berhenti kerja just because we want we want to go 100% into something else kan sebab dia the day Uh, risk is always there, I think. Ada risiko yeah. yang benda tu tak menjadi. And of course, uh, maybe you can talk about that after this. Okay, which is kalau tam- jadi, you have nothing else as your safety net lah. Which is, bye-bye lah kot. Mm. And then, okay. uh, just nak tambah. <laughs> yes, uh, macam for those yang kerja in a uh, field of expertise yang maybe diorang tak align dengan apa yang diorang nak buat on the side lah kan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dia business kan. For example, mm-hmm. maybe dia buat engineering ke apa kan. Mm-hmm. So, itu okay, yes. Macam, okay, nak kena berhenti kerja ataupun tak. But, it can be, you can think of it 
another way juga so mm-hmm. uh, let's say you nak go into marketing you nak buat your site tu macam marketing nak jadi content creator ke apa you can switch careers tu pun oh. another option juga you switch okay. your career so that it aligns with your site site hustle ke apa oh, so okay. that way tak adalah macam 100% berhenti kerja it's just a switch mm. career faham 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 ya uh, which is that enables you to you know polish your skill even further lah kan sebab you were doing it yeah that's actually interesting uh, wow tak tak pernah terfikir i think that's the first in seven episode someone has mentioned something like that to you know <laughs> change career sebab untuk uh, to make it align with your skill like, this is pretty uh, a pretty genius move if you ask me okay now follow up question to that uh, still in the scope of people working or not working okay so most people say that dia tak ada skill ataupun dia tak tahu apa skill dia so what's your advice for this kind of people yang dia kata dia tak ada skill dia tak ada skill dia tak ada skill apa advice you untuk orang-orang macam ni jadi jadi susah sikit because <laughs> for okay. me I believe semua orang ada skill yes um. uh, it's just dia kena cari okay, betul to really deep dive Uh, find what you good at and then sebenarnya mm-hmm. benda ni macam exposure je kadang kita oh. tak tahu oh skills ni boleh jual ke ada orang ah, betul. nak ke skills ni kan betul. so the more you expose uh, one one way is uh, kita boleh follow kan macam content-content dekat TikTok mm. banyak yang dia orang cerita how they are making money doing betul. macam very small skills just bagi kita rasa macam simple gila betul, betul. tapi dia boleh they can make money Uh, so being exposed in that sense uh, and then another way is just looking at the marketplace uh, the marketplace so ada mm. just certain platforms macam Fiverr uh, kalau kat Malaysia macam ada Swifty kan mm, all these yes. platform yang services uh, mm. those are good platforms nak guna platform to for research pun boleh and you can find oh, orang buat translation services uh. <laughs> you might think it's simple but yeah they are making money yes itulah so just being exposed uh, to to this ah uh, that that's mm. just my my advice yeah, so, yeah yeah for me i don't believe ada orang tak ada skill langsung <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just you have to find it you have to uh, you know just get more exposure in terms of yeah. selling your skills so macam tengok ni podcast ni kan <laughs> yeah. selling skill podcast uh, so that is one of the ways so it's just about discovering what's the skills that you have Betul. Even Betul. kalau you kerja corporate job but your daily job is guna Excel mm. hari-hari kan? Buat yeah, spreadsheet yeah. ke apa? That's still a skill and people Betul. are willing to pay for that. Yeah, so itu je lah one of the examples. Betul. Betul. Saya sangat setuju 100% dalam lah. Which is everyone ada skill cuma kena expose yourself and be discovered kan? So that question, uh, ada follow up question which is based on what you just mentioned lah. So how did Amirul Mokhita discover yang dia ada skill in marketing. Saya nak tahu benda ni. Ni <laughs> okay so this one goes way back lah. Okay. Uh, before I got into uh, marketing ni. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sebenarnya how I discovered digital marketing, internet marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that time we call it internet marketing lah. Internet marketing ya. Yeah. Internet internet marketing kan. So I ex- accidentally lah <laughs> macam tak ada lah plan. Okay tapi ada pergi this one seminar. Oh, uh, internet marketing guru dia ajar buat WordPress, dia ajar mm. so you are selling something like you can make money through blogging. Oh, oh. Ini oh. memang uh, 2012 macam tu. Oh. 2012 like making money online through blogging. So macam mm-hmm. invest lah. So join this seminar. So dekat situ discovered the whole thing. Okay, this, this dream macam kita boleh work from anywhere tepi pantai kan boleh masuk <laughs> ke apa kan that was the dream for internet marketing tu Betul. and then i uh, ex- i started exploring by doing my own blog mm. so, buat photography lah photography and i did some volunteering uh, services so i blog macam tu and then came across seo lah search engine optimization uh-huh. uh, ads google ads so all this internet marketing stuff <laughs> that time and that led me to uh, applying for a job in internet marketing so i got my first job as an internet marketing executive <laughs> then after that i think like few years in my career too 
then I discovered something which is if they are paying me to do this, other people also will pay me to do the same thing. Oh, to okay. Je, dia punya discovery dia. Faham. So at that point, then it's just uh, from there je lah. Uh, start doing some freelancing and so on. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they discover kat situ, okay, if I'm getting paid, can salary, and you're getting paid a salary to do this job, mm-hmm. then other people are willing to pay for it too. Faham, faham. So mm. kat situ je And then it click Macam right away Terus Masuk dunia freelancing So that was a light bulb moment lah Yeah light bulb moment uh, uh, And then bila buat freelancing ni uh, It led to another thing Which is Oh ramai lagi nak tahu benda ni But mm-hmm. uh, I'm not able to Help All of the uh, Businesses I'm not um. able to help all the companies So start lah Teaching mm-hmm. Bagi talk Oh, oh, oh. So there was basically it. There's there's no chance secret sauce ke apa. It's nah. <laughs> one thing led to another. Faham, faham. Tapi dekat situ lah, if if the company is willing to pay you for this thing, then a lot of other companies are willing to pay you juga. Uh, that's a for good takeaway. That's a good takeaway. Okay, which is uh, if people are willing to pay you for something, mesti ada orang lain yang pun nak bayar you for the same thing. Betul. Okay, that's a very good takeaway. And then just to follow up on that, okay, you've been doing this for quite some time, obviously longer than I have been doing lah. Uh, back in 2012, saya rasa 2012, I was in form 3, maybe? <laughs> good. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I was mas- lagi lap hikmus lah dekat sekolah, kan? And you uh, have all been doing, uh, already have been doing internet marketing, digital marketing lah. So, this is one question. That I want to know that maybe uh, bila Milo Konsi kan, mungkin a lot of them can get a lot of benefit from it lah. But it's quite a personal question. So I hope uh, you're okay and ready for it lah. Okay. Throughout all the years where you were promoting and selling your skill, what is one mistake that Amiro Mota buat yang Amiro rasa orang lain pat- tak patut dan patut, sorry, patut elakkan daripada buat? Hmm. Oh ni susah eh? soalan. <laughs> uh, I think financial mistakes kot. Financial mistakes. Yes. Uh, so financial mistakes, I would say, um, it's a big one. Financial decision mm-hmm. decisions ah, mm-hmm. uh, like so you making certain certain decisions with uh your mm-hmm. financial. Um, uh, contoh dengan loan ke apa business loan macam nampak okay business ni is doing well. So end up kita pun buat oh, let's grow it. Let's take out some loan, business loan ke, apply for loan. Dah end up benda tu dia tak adalah teruk sangat. Like in my case tak teruk sangat. It's just hmm. that it will make you more desperate. Faham. Sebab you are digging a hole lah ni, macam kita gali lubang and then jadi deeper and deeper and then susah nak keluar balik. Faham, faham. So the nak nak keluar balik tu then it will take a lot of your time uh, to achieve what you want lah. sebab kena kena keluar you have to get yourself out from the hole dulu mm-hmm. uh, so that was the one thing that i think uh, in terms of mistakes uh, it, mm-hmm. the, like financial decisions oh, oh. benda-benda macam tu i see i see yeah tu yang akan hold you back oh, oh. okay so uh That's actually something that I need to learn as well as well because of course I'm a bit yeah, on the younger side kan, muda sikit so uh, when we are uh, muda ni, orang biasa lah dah muda kan bila orang bagi all those opportunities and what not, dia macam tend untuk you see the monetary value ini macam oh nak je buat something like that kan, especially you know taking loans ke apa benda kan so I think that's very good advice and I thank you for that lah alright so kita dah sampai dekat penghujung kita punya podcast so there's one question signature question ni maybe if uh, all of them that pernah tak pernah tengok kita punya podcast ataupun pernah dengar dekat Spotify sebagainya they dah tahulah tapi I'm not sure if I'm, uh, you are aware of this question lah but there's always a twist lah dan saya akan add kan based on perkongsian the speaker to our the podcast okay so here's the question now kalau lah Amirul Mohtar terpaksa, terpaksa start balik daripada kosong Starting from zero, okay. And you only have seratus ringgit sahaja dalam account bank. My question is, what is one skill yang Amirul akan pilih 
Okay, because you have a lot of skills, SEO, semua benda tu kan. What is one skill, satu je, yang you akan gunakan untuk jual. Then how are you going to sell it? And then my second question is, apakah RM100 itu digunakan untuk apa? Okay. Alright. Yeah, so this on the podcast lah. Tapi uh. itulah nak, nak fikir the what's the perfect answer tu. Uh, susah. Yeah, yeah. I so, what you mean. Uh, in terms of the skill right now I have is mm-hmm. I can pilih skill yang memang very uh, tangible lah in terms of outcome uh, so mm-hmm. for my case the memang I will just teach teaching oh, okay. teaching is something that I'm confident with so kalau right. I start from zero uh, then ada seratus ringgit je I will start with teaching so teaching what will depend lah. So for example, like what I would teach is macam mana nak buat website. Hmm, macam faham. mana nak buat website uh, siap dalam masa satu hari. Hmm, so that's faham, the thing faham. that uh, I would do. Uh, so the skills too is my skill of knowing how to uh, build the website lah. Hmm, Walaupun faham. tak pandai IT ke apa. Uh, so this would be uh, the skill or the thing that I would sell. Faham, faham. Okay, so dengan uh, the yang seratus ringgit tu nak buat apa? Mm-hmm. So what I would just do uh, for that one hundred ringgit is uh, pay for some tools like macam website tu berapa ringgit je? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not it's not that expensive. Even ada free uh, ada free kan? Mm-hmm. Ada free yeah, and then maybe ada simpan sikit untuk buat like some pick retweet ke? Apa kah minta tolong okay ni uh, I can pay you tu thirty ringgit boleh tak tolong promote. Hmm. Uh, benda, oh. benda macam tu okay uh, promote benda tu help them macam kat Twitter cari ke influencer ke apa. Hmm. And then uh, kalau ada that amount money guna untuk marketing that uh, workshop tu. Hmm. Uh, so that is the thing that that I'm confident to do kalau start from zero kena buat balik semua. That's how I would get my money back. Alright. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. that's simple je. <laughs> simple je lah. Simple. Uh, I think simple always work. Yeah, that's what I believe in. Sometimes kita nak complicate sangat pun, hmm. you know, because you have limited resources, limited money, limited connection, semua tu. I think simple, simple always work lah. <laughs> I think. So, maybe uh, mungkin anda awak dengar ni nanti Tengok balik, ah uh, tengok kemudian hadam apa yang Amiru cakapkan ni which is it's pretty simple. I agree it's simple but in my opinion it will work and I believe of course someone with Amiru punya experience, uh, you will never lose your experience kan. You start macam kosong daripada mana pun, you never lose experience lah. Okay, Amiru saya ucapkan terima kasih banyak-banyak luangkan masa bersama saya untuk podcast episod ke-7 ini. So maybe before we sign off, you have uh, your final words ke kepada kita punya audience, apa nak nasihat ke ataupun uh, maybe dekat mana nak cari Amir Ramhota ke after this dan sebagainya. Okay. Uh, so yeah, boleh. So I'm very active on uh, Twitter lah. Uh, mm-hmm. Social media tak berapa sangat. So my okay. Twitter, uh, Amirul Mokhtar. Okay. You find Amirul Mokhtar right. uh, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I do some sharing dekat situ juga. Betul. Uh, so even uh, I'm sharing my journey juga. So ni sekarang dah uh, doing full time <laughs> to my my side hustle ni dah jadi full time. Wow. So I will be sharing a lot more of my journey. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to follow dan kalau you dengar dekat Spotify pun nanti akan ada link untuk pergi check out Amir Mota punya Twitter because In my experience sendiri, I've been following him for quite a while. Okay, so he has been a lot, doing a lot of sharing. And semuanya, to me, tak ada BS lah. Everything is hands-on based on experience dan full of value. So, uh, bagi awak yang dengar, saya just nak ingatkan, 26 Mei, saya akan launchkan buku saya, Sell Your Skill. Okay, so dapatkan buku ni sebab masa hari launching ni lah, akan ada bonus dan sebagainya. Dan jangan lupa untuk subscribe kepada YouTube channel Ibrahim ni untuk pastikan anda dapat notification bila saya upload video ataupun notification on our next podcast then if you're listening on Spotify be sure to hit the follow so make sure you are updated lah dan kepada guest kita Amin Omota terima kasih sekali lagi sebab luangkan masa untuk recording dan untuk 
podcast ni lah sebab apa uh, it is from people like you yang berkongsi ni lah yang kita akan dapat lebih banyak sebab saya sendiri I don't know a lot but people like you that have a lot of experience I thank you for doing all of this lah ok so insyaAllah kita akan jumpa lagi dalam episod yang seterusnya I'll see you when I see you Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh